this Acadian special, we are focusing on the infrastructure sector and how can the sector cope post the COVID-19. Well, before we went for the break, I was taking on a very interesting subject on a funding of road projects in the country. And I'd like to just allow Engineer Gitao to jump in before we can take more questions from our viewers. Uh, thank you, Abi. I agree with you. We have been having a, a narrow funding, uh, uh, a narrow funding base for the road subsector. However, the developments that uh, have happened over the years, with the enactment of the Kenya Road Board Act 1999, and building that fund from two billion now to 60 billion, uh, our plans is to build this fund to 85 billion. And this will uh, meet the immediate maintenance uh, needs on our roads. And going to the road development side, you know for sure we have an ambitious program that is carried under our Vision 2030. And uh, the big four, you remember the big four key, because the road sector will be an enabler. Other areas of funding have been identified already. We've had a study. Uh, that has recommendations for discussion. We call this study the transport, transport sector funding study, and we have a policy. We have drafted a policy that will have to go through the paces. In this policy, we are proposing issues related to vehicle licenses, some kind of a tax that can come, because we are thinking of the beneficiary principle. For you who are motoring traffic, you are the people who we are building these roads for. And it is critical that the beneficiary pays for the services they get. We are talking about taxes on vehicles, uh, insurance premiums. We are talking on issues related to the land value capture. Remember, roads create major transformation on the land use plans. There is major transformation and it is possible some people benefit from the transformation of their space more than the rest. To bring equity and equality then, there is issues to do with betterment levies. We can have taxes on the purchase of spares that comes to the road subsector. We want to say the thinking has already been done. The studies have already been done. We are in the process of getting this policy adapted so that we can have uh, a menu of uh, funding streams that will see that we are able to fund our infrastructure. Remember, with the finance bill, the tolling policy uh, under the legislative framework for tolling was passed, and that is this year. Uh, we commend our uh, parliament for supporting that finance bill because uh, now we have a tolling regime. So. This is work in progress, Abby, and I agree with you. Uh, it is something that needs to be uh, fast tracked and shared with the public so that they know uh, what processes will ensure that our projects are well funded. Uh, Raseka, uh, a lot, you know, you have always been our partner in many fora. You are the chief executive, you know, we meet several with you, and uh, you know, we do our best to ensure that uh, your members are sufficiently. Uh, compensated for the great work you do for this nation and we'll continue with the partnership with you Raseka and you know we welcome you and we have always welcomed you to our boardrooms and we know for sure whatever will be the funding and or the financing model it will actually help you uh, maybe access uh, greater opportunities for your companies to grow and also to serve the public through employment and investment in our in our economy. Thank you, Abi. Itao. Well, I'd like us to now take some questions from our viewers, and quite a number of questions are streaming in on this very important subject. Well, let's take a look at our super wall now. We have a question here from Javin Ocheng. He's saying, happy to see my friend, Engineer Gitao, today. My question, Engineer, what is your office doing to improve fairness in tender awarding to the youths? A very good question there. We have the uh, same gentleman as also putting a question, actually a, a comment. Good work to Kera. 
is doing most roads in our slums like Madare are getting paved roads. Kudos to Kera. Uh, there's another question, uh, actually another question here from Zakayo Otieno is saying, Agina, what I'm asking is why do railways pay road levy on fuel but they are retaining their own line? Well, I'd like to just also hear what uh, engineer a lot you have to say about this issue of awarding of tenders to the young people. Yes, um, oh, tender awards to young people. Okay, for that, um, Raseka is open to everybody. We do not uh, discriminate against uh, gender, age, nationality, or anything. So our members benefit from um, us being able to interrogate the tender process. We have an occasion when we have seen some, uh, some situations of where the procurement law is not being abided by. We have actually stepped in and uh, questioned it and actually taken the necessary action against uh, those particular uh, areas. So in as far as ensuring a safe and fair playing ground, Raseka fights for the local Kenyan citizens. Thank you. Engineer Kandie, would you also want to respond on this? Are we giving the youth an opportunity to also get these tenders in uh, this uh, government uh, project? Agina, what is there in place is that uh, the National Treasury has given us guidelines which we are implementing. For any procurement that we do, we have set aside 30 percent to be for the special groups. These special groups comprise of the youth, women, and even persons with disability. So the youth have been, they have set aside some certain contracts, which is about 14 percent minimum of the procurement that it is set aside for the youth. So they compete among themselves and it is reserved for them. So, and we are actually following this even when we are preparing our procurement plans. Thank you, Abi. All right. It's one thing for Engineer Kandia to talk about the 30% of projects set aside for the youth. It's another thing for this to be actually implemented, Engineer Gitao. Do you have a an, uh, do you have a mechanism that we can track to ensure that there is fairness and can we also get to see how many youth have been able to benefit? Abi, uh, let me say hello to Javino Cheng. He's my friend. Uh, he's one of the budding young contractors and a hardworking young man. And uh, congratulations, Cheng. We know you will be a success in this sector because you understand uh, the fairness aspect uh, is actually well captured in our performance contract. Uh, every single cabinet secretary signs a performance contract with downstream divisions and agencies. And the performance contracts we have signed with Kera, Kura, Kenha, and even the other uh, divisions is that the access to government procurement opportunities, popularly known as AGPO, is a metric within the performance contract. And I am shocked because I think in every report we are having from the agencies, we are doing more than 30%. In fact, if you go to the government procurement wall, my government, you will see there is clearly designated and packaged works that uh, have access only to youth, women, and persons with disability. But Abi, you know, uh, this country has all kinds uh, of possibilities because if Abi, you have a young man and you have registered your company in his name, then maybe that uh, uh, opportunity is not going to the young man, it maybe it's coming to Abi. Maybe somebody has registered uh, many companies with. Uh, 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 the people with disabilities and therefore is a question of integrity and the kind of uh, market uh, you know market awareness because I think the greatest gap for the youth is training we need to build capacity for them we need to give them access to uh, equipment and plant and training for bidding so that 
they are able to, to press in very competitive bids because the market is also very competitive. Again, I, I want to tell you, it's very competitive. Javin has played this and he knows. And we wish you, Javin, all the best. We in the ministry, you know, we will support you. And the agencies will be, they will hold their fidelity to the uh, uh, statutory requirement that 30 percent of what you're procuring must be safeguarded for the youth, women, and people with disability. Uh, it's a difficult question to answer, Abi. Thank you, Engineer. I, I just want to you, stop you've, there. you've done your best. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Abi. Uh, our time is far much spent, and uh, gentlemen, we need to take this discussion home now. I'd like to get your closing remarks, Engineer Kandie. What do you see on the, in the horizon, especially now that there's a lot of appetite for infrastructure projects and there are organizations that are keen on funding uh, Africa in terms, in terms of uh, just implementing of this very important project? Happy. I want to be very grateful for, I'm very grateful for this opportunity. My parting shot is this. As we continue to construct this infrastructure, we really need to protect them. The users, these are your roads, and we've got certain challenges in terms of overloading. If we overload, we will not get the lifespan within which we will enjoy the facility. The second aspect is on our land use. You get that every Kenyan or everyone wants to be close to a road which we have developed. By so doing, you create certain challenges in terms of the usability of the road. That is why we have harms, or uh, you can call them bumps unnecessarily, because we have come close to a facility which is supposed to assist us. So the way you use the, our land adjacent to the road reserve, even in terms of encroachment, then we bring some certain safety issues which may not be sustainable. Then the third aspect is the issues of environment. I think we need to be very conversant that when you stay near the road, there are a lot of carbon emissions which we really need to protect. We need to be away from it. So as we also use the land, there is the natural easement where we, we let our water go through. There is an environmental act which allows water to flow naturally to where it's supposed to flow. And then, you know, water is a great damage to the infrastructure. So we really urge all of us that as we do have this infrastructure, let us be able to protect by our activities. Even the signage which we place on our roads for the issues of safety, you get that they are, they are vandalized. Then we, we really want us all as Kenyans to protect the infrastructure that we have developed so that it can be for the use of all of us, to yeah. be for a better use, and it will, we will get the services it is designed for. Right. And we are committed to ensure that we give access to everyone. Thank you very much, Happy, and it's a, it was a great opportunity Thank that you, we Jiria. talked to our Kenyans. Quite an honor to have you on the program. Engineer Alot, your closing thoughts. Just make it brief in under a minute. Uh, uh, thank you, Abby. Yes, uh, I'd like to uh, thank uh, Engineer Gitao. He's been a friend of uh, Raseka, and the ministry has been a friend of Raseka uh, since its inception. Yes, and we, Raseka will continue to liaise with the government, uh, and government finances and other regulatory uh, agencies on all matters affecting the industry and in the uh, formulation of terms and conditions and contract uh, uh, related to the contracts and, uh, and civil engineering construction. Uh, so uh, just as a parting shot, I'd like to say that uh, uh, we should be able to uh, review the classification of our, and carry out fresh vetting for uh, some of our contractors because not everybody purporting to be a contractor is indeed a professional contractor. And as a Roseca, we just want to say that we are a professional association with professionals who engage in roads and civil works, and uh, we hold our members to a high standard, and we have a code of conduct that they adhere to, and we uh, ensure that they uh, uh, work within the uh, tender documents and the government uh, directives uh, based on the tender. Uh, our offices are open to any uh, members of the public, 
or any contractors who wish to come and know further about Roseka. Thank you, Abby, for the opportunity, and thank you to uh, all the Kenyans for watching, and a uh, good day. Thank you. All right, thank you so much. And uh, last but not least, Engineer Gitao, in just 30 seconds, uh, just give us your closing thoughts. Oh, <laughs> thank you so much, Abby. Uh, 30 seconds will be enough. Uh, I just want to appreciate the partnership KTN has shown with the government we are able to discuss pertinent issues which basically remain in the boardroom. But in my closing remarks, I just want to think of the future of infrastructure and say we have policy guidelines under the AU, African Union. We have Agenda 2063. You know there is a great uh, 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 desire to have an integrated African community, intra and uh, inter-country integration uh, the bottom line for infrastructure development is the quality of life uh, we want to see the next big thing happening in the cities and the towns whereby like is happening in Nairobi here uh, with our NMS we are seeing the lower part of the mobility plan of the city we are providing non-motorized traffic infrastructure walkways and cycle paths and that is sustainable mobility as Engineer Kadia said again, we need a robust asset management policy that will ensure that we bequeath this great investment to the next generation. And with those remarks, uh, Agina, thank you, KTN Fraternity. Thank you, Engineer. Uh, we, ap we appreciate your partnership, and we are honored to be part of the panelists in this program. Thank you. Thank you so much also, gentlemen. It's been an honor to moderate this discussion with engineers just trying to give Kenyans a sense of understanding of what is happening in regards to the road and infrastructure sector and indeed quite a lot in the offing seamless connectivity should be the game well that's why we wrap it up on this KT news special my name is Abhi Agina see you next time keep safe <laughs>